You know, back in the 1970s, scientists discovered a mysterious gravitational anomaly called the Great Attractor. Wait a minute, I had that nickname in high school. Anyway, it's a place in the sky that draws hundreds of galaxies, including our Milky Way. You won't be able to see it because it's on the other side of the Milky Way, 150 million light years away. The Great Attractor actually lies in the direction scientists usually call the zone of avoidance. Yeah, I have one of those too. It's my closet. Now, there's so much dust and gas in this region that we can't see what's happening there. That area blocks most of the visible light from beyond. But all that dust and gas don't block X-rays and infrared light. So as X-ray astronomy developed, researchers could finally start to observe all the objects within that area, including the mysterious force attracting everything. But so far, no one has figured out why it's happening. Our moon may be 200 million years younger than we previously thought. Many scientists believe that the moon formed during a powerful collision between our planet and an unknown Mars-sized body. The molten dust and debris got together and formed a new object we know as the moon. The lunar crust was probably going through a process of solidifying over a couple of hundred million years. Did you know about an early magma ocean on the moon? Scientists realized it was a real thing after they had discovered big amounts of the lightweight mineral called plagioclase. This material usually crystallizes and floats to the surface of magma. Anyway, this mineral was 4.36 billion years old, which means it formed 200 million years after the first solid materials had appeared in our solar system. Thus, the theory that the moon formed during this giant chaotic collision might be true. Now, if you stand on the moon one day and leave your footprint on its surface, it can stay there for a million years. You'd also see the footprints of other astronauts, even though no one has landed on the lunar surface for decades now. The moon doesn't have a full-fledged atmosphere. There's no breeze or anything else that can sweep up the dust and erase the footprints. We see it as a small dot somewhere in the distance. But in reality, the sun is so big that if it were an empty ball, you could fill it with more than a million Earths. The sun makes up 99.86% of the mass of our entire solar system. Another enormous object in our solar system is Jupiter. It's 11 times wider than our planet. For example, Earth isn't even the size of the Great Red Spot. This enormous storm has been raging on Jupiter for more than a century. And no, it's not anchored to anything solid, since Jupiter is a gas giant. It's like a massive hurricane, oval in shape, reddish in color, and wide enough to engulf our home planet. Once upon a time, it was three times as wide as our planet, but over the last few centuries, it's been shrinking as well as growing taller. As for Jupiter, this gas giant is some sort of vacuum cleaner that keeps our solar system safe. Jupiter has incredibly strong gravity that eats up comets or asteroids that might potentially harm our home planet. In some other planetary systems, gas giants similar to Jupiter migrate from the position where they formed. They spiral inward and come closer to their parent stars. And as they travel, they swallow up small rocky planets. Or their strong gravitational force flings these planets out of their star systems. Luckily for us, Jupiter's gravitational force doesn't work that way. If Jupiter-like planets stay away from their stars, they keep their planetary systems safe protecting those small planets in their inner orbit. Jupiter, for instance, can change the orbits of small space bodies that come too close to the inner planets of our solar system. That's why this gas giant is a good guardian of our solar system. Now, there's a supermassive black hole that roams through space at a speed of 3 million miles per hour and leaves a trail of debris behind. Hey, I had a little brother who once did that. It's about a million times as heavy as our sun and, at the moment, 2 billion light years away from Earth. This black hole started like any other, in its own elliptical galaxy with many stars surrounding it. Supermassive black holes often form and remain in the center of galaxies. But this one got away. One theory claims that this black hole is different because the galaxy where it formed may have bumped into another galaxy at one point in the past. Sometimes, galaxies merge into a new one if this happens. But not this time. Instead of merging, the black hole's galaxy passed through a way bigger one millions of years ago. That giant galaxy already swallowed up some other galaxies along the way. And since it was so large, 
the galaxy surrounding our supermassive black hole ended up ripped apart. The black hole at its center managed to run away with some of the nearby stars. That's what left a burning trail stretching across the surrounding space. Solar superstorms are so powerful that they can cause blackouts all over the world. Random flares coming from the sun cause solar storms, and they can really happen at any time. Back in 2012, we were lucky because the strongest solar storm in over 150 years passed very close to us. It just tore through Earth's orbit. If it had happened only a week earlier, our planet would have had to deal with tons of terrible consequences, including power outages all over the globe. Gamma ray bursts are strong enough to destroy planets. We're talking about extremely strong bursts that mostly occur in galaxies very, very far away. If these rays are pointed directly at some space object, they can completely wreck it, even if we're talking about an entire planet. So Earth is safe for now, and we have nothing to be afraid of. A gamma ray burst happens in our galaxy approximately once every 5 million years. Luckily, it occurs too far away and doesn't affect life on Earth. That's what I call irrelevant, but still scary. A burning ice is a thing. It may be hard to picture it here on Earth, but one strange planet called Gliese 436b is literally a burning ball of ice. It's covered with ice, but at the same time, it has temperatures of 822 degrees Fahrenheit. You can't actually see the planet burn, since there's too much water on the planet. It's because of the strong gravitational force that pulls the water molecules to the core of the planet and packs them together incredibly densely. That way, water molecules can't evaporate which is why the ice on the planet's surface doesn't melt. There are stars that can munch on other stars. These space objects are mostly smaller stars with a lower mass. They target the closest stars and begin to absorb their hydrogen fuel to boost their own mass and generally live longer. A vampire star becomes strikingly blue. It also gets hotter. This way, it seems that it's way younger than it actually is. If a star, or basically any other object, falls into a black hole, it gets stretched like spaghetti. This process is even called spaghettification. The gravitational force of a black hole stretches an object in one direction, but at the same time, squeezes it in another. And telescopes have captured such a process a mere 215 million light years away from us. An unlucky star was wandering too close to a supermassive black hole at the center of a galaxy. The star, which was approximately the same mass as our Sun, didn't stand a chance against the extremely strong gravitational pull of the black hole. After all, the black hole we're talking about was over a million times as massive as our star. Astronomers were lucky to record this event, because after a black hole eats a star, it often spits out its material in the form of dust, so it's hard to see what's going on there. Anyways, this picture of the black hole, was it a spitting image? Hey, what did you expect to rate? Okay, I'll stop now.